Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before I start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting on daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start with the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces. So I'll play the London system setup. It starts with d4. Bishop comes on f4, developing the dark square bishop first before closing its diagonal. Otherwise, the bishop remains undeveloped for most of the time. I'll play pawn forward. Um, he's trying to build up on the pressure on the center. I'll just solidify, just making sure my pieces are on the right squares. Uh, we can get the knight out. Knight on f3 is a good square in the London. So let's proceed with that. Uh, if bishop comes here and I'll not take, I'll let him probably fall for some trap. Uh, how is queen here? I think he plays pawn forward. Uh, but yeah, I think I can do that. Or well, let's just develop the other knight. And then knight f3, connecting both of them. Open castles. I can play g4 as well. Uh, he can come here with the knight. I'll play bishop here. Maybe he'll push pawn forward. Doesn't. Okay. Surprisingly. I want to take with the knight. Or I want to take with the pawn. Uh, takes with the pawn. He comes here. I take. He has double pawns. Let's make him have double pawns. Comes down. I take. And I go here with the queen. And I'll take on the pawn as well. And this is saying the right diagonal already. He can come here though. Okay, that's what he chooses. Um, I have this move. Uh, can I take the pawn? Probably yes, but then I have to bring it back and uh, my pawn structure here will be like bad. So I will come down asking him to take if he really wants to. And he does the mistake I would say because uh, now I take and open up the edge file as well for the attack and this really doesn't hurt because I have this knight move as well where I can go for the knight okay uh, I am expecting to play pawn forward maybe so I'll try to move my bishop straight away or let him um, let me just play pawn forward maybe Mm, how do I break this now? How is pawn forward? He does take, I take, or just let's make space for castling on either side. And let's castle depending on what my open plays next. Ah, pawn forward. Trying to open up the F file for the attack. That's nice. I will let him do that. Takes with the rook or the bishop. Should I take with the bishop, otherwise I'm going to go in with the knight. Maybe a sacrifice then would work here. Even if he takes with the rook, I'm, I can still go. Takes with the bishop. I don't mind going here. If he really wants to take, he can. I take back with the pawn and rectify my structure. Or even this can work. How is rook takes? Rook takes is nice actually. Uh, and I can exchange rooks as well. If he just tries to double up here. Then he, I place my rook on the end, on the f4, and then after his queen is come here, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Uh, so I'll just exchange rooks here. He has to move away now, and I'll take on the rook. Yep, let's take, and now I can castle. Um, so that pawn is also defended. I can play pawn forward. He's got light square bishop which is not yet developed and the rook. My pieces are developed. Uh, pawn forward would mean that, yes, I have to get my bishop back, which is okay. I can try and attack this diagonal. Uh, this doesn't work right now. So I'll try to come. Okay, where is my bishop actually? Here. 
Okay, I think I should just try and break open this file because his king lies there. And I'll have this move lead routing my queen to dark squares, maybe exchanging them. Once the pawn breaks happen, in the center, I have my queen lined up already. I have my bishop which can come into play. Okay, I'll still play pawn forward. Let's see what my opponent is doing. Because my plan is simple. I'll play pawn forward maybe. Uh, this way I can't proceed. Oh, he just moves his king upside. Okay, proceeds, takes, 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 and then I can't take this pawn. Okay. But what if I play this pawn forward? Uh, this is weak. Okay, let's play this so that my f pawn is fine. Now I can go for the pawn break if he really wants to. If he doesn't, I have this, I have this. So lots of attacks going on now in the center, which my opponent understands, and plays pawn forward which is okay. I do take the pawn. Pawns are solid here. Now I have this queen move. Queen is going to swiftly go on e3. The idea is to pin the pawn and then take on the bishop. That is one of the plans. Okay, I have to move. This is also one way of taking on the queen and exchanging stuff. Uh, I can go here and actually just take the pawn as well. Free pawn there. Open sees that coming. I have this queen move as well though. Okay, let's go here actually attacking the rook, attacking the pawn. He offers queen exchange. Why would I take queen? And I'm getting a free rook. Resignation. Yep. On time. Let's analyze the game. Uh, rematch is later on. Because we are recording this. Alright. So I started with d4. My opponent played d5. I went with bishop f4. C5 by the opponent. I play e6, knight c6. Sorry, I played e3 there, yeah. And then knight c6 by my opponent. I play c3. Pawn to e6 by my opponent, and I get the knight on f3. So these are the standard moves in the London. You can actually follow the order or not. But these are the controlling squares in the London. You develop the bishop, you create a solid pyramid in the center. Take your knight on f on e5, which is a controlling square because, of course, you are attacking a lot of stuff with the knight. Centralized knights are always important, and so are bishops. So the ultimate goal is to put light square bishop also on d3. Important point was we develop the bishop first before closing its diagonal, and then we can go on with the other knight on d2 and then to f3, connecting both of them, so that if the opponent does take, we can eventually take with the knight. And here also, if the opponent does take, there's no problem. You can take with the pawn or the bishop. Both are actually okay. Computers recommend taking with the pawn. The idea is to move the knight away from here. Generally, the knight would come on to uh, e4 there by the opponent. And you can play pawn forward. And here, my opponent doesn't have much choices remaining because the knight is kind of trapped there. So, opponent can try to attack the bishop. Uh, here, you can either save the bishop. Uh, or you can just take on the knight, come to the service to take on the knight because after the opponent does take with the pawn, uh, you have this check coming and you will just be exchanging the bishops and then you have this pawn weakened up. Uh, you, center pawn is also being attacked twice with queen and the pawn, so white would gain some space. But instead of the game, my opponent doesn't take, uh, so I just continue my development by knight to d2. Opponent develops the bishop on e7, then knight comes on f3, as the idea was to connect both the knights. Now opponent castles, I go with bishop to d3. It's important to develop your pieces on the right squares uh, before going for exchanges, so that uh, once you are going for exchanges, at least your pieces are out, and then you can proceed with an attack straight away, rather than later on developing your pieces. My opponent does take here, and important thing was his bishop is not yet developed, and the rook remain same. Uh, I'm also preparing to castle on the king side or just queen side after moving my queen. 
So development wise, uh, white is ahead. That's why white is ahead in the evaluation bar as well, just slightly. But yes, it, it does matter. Sovereign does take on the knight. I take with the pawn here. I should have taken with the knight is what computer is suggesting. So that my pawn structure remains solid. But I took with the pawn asking the knight to be moved, which does happen. Then I got my bishop back because I was hoping that my opponent will take on the bishop with the knight. That's what happens. And that's a bad move, I would say, because after I take, uh, I have this solid file opened up for the attack. And it's tough to control uh, the attacks at some point of time. My opponent plays g6, the right move. I could go for the pawn break, but I thought of placing my queen on the diagonal first. Now here my opponent plays f5, again a bad move. Doesn't uh, He probably didn't think that I would you know, take the pawn by uh, having the end percent. And I do take the pawn there. Uh, I was thinking of the sacrifice, but I went with another piece. Okay, so this would have actually worked if my opponent does take here. Um, that's going to be troubles for my opponent. Um, I can just harass the opponent going from all the places. Bishop cannot take this because queen is spinning the king. And after he does move there, I have a free bishop to be taken. Uh, of course, rook cannot come here because I can take that as well. So opponent will have to move the king. The best move is to go here. Uh, here we can just double up. And as you see, it's almost game over because this is going to be a deadly attack. Uh, not here actually, but on uh, on e7 there. Uh, opponent can develop the rook, but we have a other rook as well. We can go for pawn break too and just trying to rip him open from the center as well. So lots of things can happen. That sacrifice thing, I didn't see that coming. I thought I'll take one more piece there for the sacrifice. Here my opponent took with the uh, bishop and I take the bishop with the rook. And then yes, right move to exchange the rooks of the board. And after I take, he takes with the king, not the queen, surprisingly. Uh, then I castle on the queen side, just making sure that my king is safe. And now I go for the end game attack kind of stuff. I played f4 here. The idea was to just push pawns forward a bit and then going with g4, opponent moves his king ahead. And then I played g3. The idea was to solidify the pawn because I was looking for a pawn break here in the center because I get my queen more active. And open plays b5 there. That's weird because you're just trying to open up from all the sides. Um, in the center, you could have opted for a pawn break. Maybe utilize your rook better. Or play this pawn forward before only, not this late in the game. And then I played e4, or asking open to take. He defends with the bishop. I take on the pawn. Open takes with the bishop. Then I get my queen on d2. Uh, the idea was correct to go to uh, e3 and then take if... Oh, sorry, not with the king, of course, but with the rook. Uh, just trying to pin uh, the king uh, with uh, by placing queen on e3. Uh, but my opponent got the rook there, so I just went with uh, still the same plan, queen to e3. Open sidesteps, understanding the threat, because this can happen anytime. Uh, so I just went in with queen to b6, as, uh, threatening uh, the rook as well as the pawn. My opponent saw that I'm threatening the um pawn there but i didn't see that the rook was hanging for free though computer suggesting that you can take on the queen because after you do take open will have to and you can take with the rook and now you are simply a rook above and it's a check so open will have to come up and then you can just go on the other side and grab some pawns attack the bishop simultaneously and your piece head uh, there's no way that it's going to stop anytime soon i took on the rook and immediately my open designs understanding that I have got a rook extra and that would be too much for him to digest at this point of time. Of course, if king goes up, I have this pawn forward as well, which I can then use and give a check uh, from the diagonal, making sure that the king always remains on these two squares, not even these two, just one square uh, that awkward hand. And then probably I can force a pawn break, get my rook active um, and do something about it. So. That was more or less over and my opponent saw that coming and that's why I resigned. I hope you liked the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a lot of videos that I'm posting up on a regular basis and there's something to be taken away as a learning always. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.